Good morning, good afternoon and uh, good evening from Helsinki and uh, welcome to the Pulse of Network webinar series, episode 13. My name is Klaus Thill and I'm the CTO of uh, Creanord. And I'm also joined here uh, today by Mr. Mikko Mattila, a director of sales engineering at Creanord. Hello, everyone. Today's topic is uh, carrier and core network assurance, where we will dive deeper into the challenges that operators of large core and wholesale carrier networks face. We will also describe some real customer cases to illustrate how, how some of our customers have solved these challenges. There are multiple trends on the market today um, that are affecting those managing large core networks. Uh, first and foremost, 5G is very actively being rolled out all over the world with the market growing at 57% annually. Uh, 5G brings more speed to the consumers, uh, resulting in more overall traffic on the network fueled particularly by high quality video consumptions consumption. But it's not only more traffic uh, that operators need to manage. Uh, 5G also brings a portfolio of new services related to industrial IoT, intelligent edge, and critical communication use cases, uh, to name a few. These new services introduce new critical traffic on the network with much more stringent requirements on the latency, jitter, loss and availability compared to earlier days. A very long lasting trend which continues with strong market growth is fixed mobile convergence. Uh, this trend is driven by drivers to provide integrated virtual private networks, unified messaging and conferencing and streaming everywhere. Uh, 5G further boosts this trend with fixed wireless access connections uh, based uh, on, on uh, uh, 5G uh, connectivity for the last mile. For instance, in the US, the households still consume more than 11 times more data over fixed networks compared to mobile access today. But uh, this is expected to change as consumer, consumers migrate from wireline networks uh, to, to these 5G fixed wireless services. Another trend that continue, continues is, uh, are the enterprises migrating their compute loads uh, to the public cloud. The enterprises are also starting to realize that they cannot rely on normal internet connections for, for connectivity to their cloud instances. Uh, various sorts of, of direct connect offerings have been introduced with operators offering connect services from the enterprise office locations to the cloud providers nearest point of pre presence with guaranteed performance levels for the connectivity. Um, and finally, uh, the COVID crisis has further accelerated uh, the sector supporting online services with, for instance, hybrid and remote working models becoming the standard for many even after the crisis start to be under control. All of these trends have a huge impact on the core and the wholesale carrier networks. The portion of traffic on the network with strict quality demands is much larger. Um, and, and this traffic is transported over the same network with all the lower priority traffic. So therefore, uh, this situation needs to be managed carefully. New service classes must be introduced for the critical traffic and the network needs to be configured and managed carefully to meet the quality requirements. One specific thing to consider is also that video traffic is particularly challenging to manage um, as it introduces very bursty traffic pa patterns in the network and the majority of the traffic uh, on the network is video nowadays. Given the challenges posed by the new network traffic, one would think that uh, operators invest on having good capabilities and tools for performance management. However, this is a blind spot for surprisingly many operators today. 
A modern performance management solution needs to provide visibility into the network performance with sufficient accuracy and granularity. Today, many operators use simplistic tools based on router embedded functionality that simply does not offer the accuracy and scalability needed for these modern networks. Without the accurate and granular measurements, you are in practice blind to what is happening in the network. Like one of our customers has said, we were previously driving the network blind before deploying a proper service assurance solution. So visibility to the real-time performance is key, but you also need to be in control longer term of the network performance. It's not only necessary to identify possible faults and issues, but a more strategic approach to view longer term performance is needed as well. All the raw data needs to be analyzed with intelligent software that summarize and show the status of the network on multiple time horizons, such as hourly, business hour, daily, weekly, and monthly horizons, so that you properly find bottlenecks and re-engineer the network to avoid uh, issues. Uh, without uh, the analytics view, the behavior of the network looks random um, and you do not find the bottlenecks. The MPLS feels like a black box. You put something in at one end and hope it will come out on the other. Rather, with the analytics data, you are able to see how the network behaves and understand how you should change your network to keep it running optimally. And finally, since you have very big pipes in your network and even a small glitch in the network performance uh, affects a lot of customers, you need to move to a proactive mode where you predict how the network is performing and identify potential bottlenecks in the network before they start to affect the end users. Uh, you need to make sure that your service assurance solution helps you to identify these trends and bottlenecks easily and efficiently. Mika will go through a few customer cases later to illustrate how some of our customers solve their service uh, assurance needs. But uh, before that, uh, let's look at some of the key capabilities you need from a, a modern and effective IP MPLS management tools. First on the list is fast time to resolution. You need to identify issues in second, uh, seconds or minutes rather than hours or days. You also need a scalable solution so that uh, you are able to monitor a full mesh of the network and you must be able to do this for multiple serv service classes. I will talk a bit more later on a separate slide on, on full visibility, uh, but um, this topic is about monitoring all paths in the network uh, that the traffic may select, particularly when you use link aggregation or equal cost multipath routing in the network. We already touched on accuracy on granularity, which uh, really is core for the network uh, visibility. And uh, particularly for wholesale carrier networks, SLA reporting is mandatory. Customers buying capacity for critical traffic want to see that the quality of the connections offered meet their standards. Traffic want to see that the quality of the connections offered meet their standards. And Finally, last but not least, integration and automation is absolutely necessary today uh, in order to automate the network operations and in integrate the data with other critical OSS systems, rather than introducing a new isolated data lake into your OSS environment. Fast time to resolution um, is achieved um, in, by having dashboards that provide the overall status uh, of the net network. And in these dash dashboards, you can easily identify issues in your network. Uh, then you can drill down from the dashboard board to the individual measurements uh, to look at different uh, time scales and analyze it further, and then further jump down to the raw data to perform the root cause analysis. In this way, you shorten the troubleshooting time dramatically. Uh, the dashboards also help you to prioritize your work and focus on the most important links in the network, which is of course, particularly important in, uh, in the core, core and, and, and carrier networks as, as you have very big pipes and, and lots of traffic. So you really need to prioritize your efforts.
A particularly useful feature for core networks is uh, link aggregation and equal cost uh, multipath uh, testing. Uh, in core networks, link aggregation is used to increase link bandwidth and to introduce redundancy. Similarly, uh, equal cost multipath routing uh, is also used for redundancy and for load balancing. Normally, when you run the test traffic, it would always select the particular link aggregation member or equal cost path in the network. Um, this means that you do not have visibility into potential issues on the other members of the link aggregation group or the other equal cost parts in the network. Uh, sometimes there may be issues that affect only one lag member uh, due to hardware issues, for instance. Uh, however, uh, with this testing capability, uh, the probe uh, may test all the members and parts uh, by introducing entropy into the test traffic uh, that ensures that the traffic is forwarded through all possible member, members and parts. And in this way, you, you are testing every po po possible part in the network and you get the full visibility uh, into the whole network performance. For core networks, proactiveness is really key. Issues and bottlenecks need to be anticipated before they affect the customer traffic, remembering again the big pipes uh, and, and the critical traffic that you have on the network. A very efficient tool to achieve this is the engineering view, which looks at the extreme values for the measurements rather than the averages. Uh, the extreme values will identify potential future bottlenecks and they show situations where uh, some smaller part of the customers or packets are affected by performance issues. This allows the operator to predict potential future problems and fix them early before they materialize. And finally, particularly for wholesale carriers, SLA reporting uh, to the customer is mandatory. Operators buying capacity from another operator needs proof that he's getting the performance that he pays for. Regular monthly reports uh, are needed that show whether each service has met the performance criteria during the month or failed. Also, details of the measured KPIs can be included in the report. With the SLA reporting, wholesale carriers can build trust with their customers and show that their network is really delivering what is required. And that was all for me. Over to you, Mika, to look at some customer cases. Okay. Um, thank you, Klaus. Our first customer case study today, it comes from an operator in one of the Latin American countries. And as mentioned here in this slide, this customer is offering quadruple services, meaning that there is a very rich mix of different services and traffic types running also in their core network as everything passes through one typically. The picture you see there on the right is not representing this customer's network, obviously, but it is just an illustration of a suggested solution that we at Creanord uh, would propose, meaning that the measurement devices are not in line, but in out of line configuration, which has its various benefits. What I mean with this is that it is beneficial in this kind of deployments that the measurement probes sit outside of the actual network they measure. So behind the routers, the PE routers most typically, and measure the whole core network itself, including also the PE routers and the quality as it is seen by the devices connected to what we consider the actual core network itself. Also, if measurement devices and measurements are not coming from the router vendor itself, it is possible to have purpose-built probes that are optimized just on performance measurements. This approach uh, breaks the silos and opens the door for competition which, of course, will again be beneficial for operators and service providers, now considering also the cost points. Some operators, as we have started to learn now, are already starting to look outside the box for something else than perhaps your most obvious solution, which would be uh, to get the solution from your router vendor itself. And instead, they're looking also elsewhere, and this trend seems to be increasing. And that's why we wanted to share our views on these topics with you today. It seems in fact that there is now some sort of a momentum starting or going on already uh, due to some normal life cycles in the market also, but more about that uh, in the coming slides. So uh, let's go back to this uh, first customer case study. 
this customer did not yet uh, have a solution for their core network performance monitoring, actually. But they had been for quite some time suffering from a profound concern that they, in fact, really did not know what was going on in their core network. The quote here comes from this customer. You know, first meeting uh, with them, they said, MPLS core is like a black box. You put something in and you, and you hope uh, that it comes out right from the other end or from the other side. Well, not the best situation to be in, but on the other hand, if you have an issue, the first correct step is to recognize and to be honest about it. And then you can next start to fix the situation. So we started discussing and they had already recognized a few key requirements. First, they needed a solution that will offer fast and significant quality improvements. Second, they needed a solution that is scalable and can handle all the needed traffic classes and also the new ones that 5G will add in future. And this needed to be available in a model that does not penalize for adding uh, of all of these traffic classes. Third, uh, that's a very important topic. They needed to be able to cover all their component links about which feature Klaus already explained earlier, the e lag or uh, ECMP testing support, which is actually something that one would typically find only in much more expensive lab equipment and which due to its high price would not be suitable for network-wide deployment. Fourth, they needed to be able to read the full benefits and leverage the same solution later also for other use cases. This makes very much sense. In fact, uh, as often even the probes uh, uh, doing the core measurements are actually in good locations to be used also for the other use cases. In addition, this customer was interested in mobile user experience measurements, but that is a topic of another day. Our second customer case study uh, of today um, is from a carrier's carrier operator who operates their network on all continents. Whereas the customer in the previous case study was looking for a solution for their own internal needs, this customer already had had one and for quite some time and it was a router inbuilt SLA reporting solution. So they had already been mandated to have one since the existing SLA reporting needs to their customers. But over time, they had realized that it just did not do it for them. Uh, reported quality KPI values were just too coarse, inaccurate, and inconsistent. The engineering team uh, knew there was problems, uh, but they did not have the visibility needed to be able to fix all of it. And they were also in a constant catch up mode, even working quite a lot based on customer complaints. Therefore, this customer had started to look for alternatives. By then, and when we started talking, they had already formed a good view of what they needed going forward. Again, all of it made great sense. And it was relative to their business profile and past experiences. First requirement was the extremely granular sampling rate so that they could see the smallest anomalies in the network. So packet forwarding loss needed to be seen in 10 millisecond uh, uh, granularity. They also needed utmost accuracy for time-related KPIs, and this mandated microsecond accurate hardware-based timestamping. Third, they already had modern automation and also needed uh, to get the results to other systems in near real time. These mandated use of RESTConf API and streaming data Kafka export API. We also had a pleasure of running a three month uh, POC or proof of concept testing with this customer, comparing the result, results, what the old and new possible solution would give. Results were rather eye opening, and you see some summarizations of them in top left corner, uh, three tables of this slide. First table on left there. Uh, shows that the old solution gave average delay that was about 100%, uh, sorry, 10% too much. Okay, it was off, but uh, maybe not that uh, dramatically. However, in case of maximum jitter in the middle table there, you can really see how different solutions can be. The old solution uh, gave max jitter that was even up to 50 times too much. This is pure poison for your operations in trying to solve problems if you really cannot see more accurately than that. 
And of course, your max latencies will be off in more or less uh, by same proportions. Very bad for your SLA reporting and penalty payments also if some SLA KPIs are max value dependent. The third table there is about packet loss. Existing solution sampling was so coarse that it tells you or told you that the zero pack, told you zero packet loss, even though there was some packet loss almost every day. It would be especially important to see uh, where and when they happen, as even 0.002% is too much uh, for a strict quality MPLS core network. And most striking shortcoming there is that even when there was more than 0.5% packet loss, the old solution still reported that as zero. It practically made the old solution useless for the purpose. The clear conclusion after this POC was to replace the old solution with the new one. After implementing the new solution, this operator was able to find and root out several severe, severe issues from their network. And once it was all fixed, they were even able to move to reactive mode of having two sets of thresholds, the normal customer thresholds for customer reporting and even stricter, uh, stricter thresholds for engineering so that they could react to issues before they start to affect the customers. All in all, this customer, by replacing, got a solution that does for them what they need and also provided it with half uh, less cost in a five-year five-year TCO model. Also, they were able to generate a lot of savings thanks to the corrected reporting and the SLA penalties they did not need to pay anymore as they were able to fix the network and run the SLA reports with confidence and reported values they and their customers could now really trust. Moving forward, the third customer case comes uh, from a tier one operator who were looking uh, for a replacement solution for their already existing uh, business SLA reporting, uh, which was used for their national and international VPN customers. The need for a performance management solution for this customer was already clear, as it was mandated by SLA reporting, obviously, but the driver for getting a new solution here was perhaps more simply just that the old solution was reaching its end of life and had to be replaced. Luckily, also this customer had realized that it might be worthwhile to take a look also for alternatives. And thanks to that, we started talking. Also, this customer had made big investments already throughout the years to the OSS and BSS, uh, but also more likely to business intelligence uh, and advanced business SLA dashboarding among several other things. And all of these put together manda mandated several kinds of integrations actually, and uh, with both legacy and modern data formats, plus over different APIs, um, plus some near real time and some not so much in real time. Not, not the easiest mix of integrations, but understandable with all the history and sheer sizes and amounts of all the different systems involved and integrated in this company. The new solution was de delivered to this customer as a turnkey project, and it now provided an enhanced visibility, meaning more accuracy in reported results, and that results feed to other systems was now near real time where needed. Also a key here was to be able to use the same system for other use cases also to get full benefit of solution investment. Not on the probes here in this case, though, since their model was chosen as the cost optimized mini probes uh, just for the business VPN SLA reporting. But it was the management and reporting solution that was reused for several other use cases as well, like mobile backhaul, performance monitoring, and managed business customer, customers SLA assurance. The key takeaway about this customer case study is perhaps that if you need to replace something anyway, it will make sense to ask for something a bit better than what you had as you're at it, and also open the door for competition to get the financial benefits as well. And obviously it won't hurt either if the same solution can then be reused for several other use cases also. Well, I suppose this is uh, all. I thought I could share with you on these topics today. I hope I have been clear about explaining all of these uh, three customer case studies to you. And with this, um, it has been, and with which it has been a great pleasure uh, uh, to work with. And with this, uh, it's back to you, Klaus. 
Thanks, Mika. Okay, so uh, in, in conclusion, uh, there are several trends that bring more traffic onto your network, um, and there is more critical traffic to manage today. Uh, traditional performance management approaches are not scalable and interoperable, uh, and do not meet the standards and requirements of, of, of today's networks. With specialized probes, um, you, you get a very cost-efficient solution with the granularity, functionality, and scalability needed today and tomorrow. And um, our Granord Pulsar solution has the features and, and capabilities for proactive and effic effective uh, modern core and carrier network assurance. Okay, so that's all we have uh, time for today. Thank you for joining. I hope it was interesting. If you uh, have some questions and or want to know more about the solution, please contact me or Mika or, or, or Sales. Uh, you can see our contact information at the at the bottom of the slide. Uh, check out our website. We have uh, uh, a lot of uh, other topics discussed in, in, in previous webinar sessions available on the web websites and, and white paper solution briefs, etc. And uh, I hope to see you joining our next webinar. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks, everybody. Bye for now.